Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the opening mechanism of a cis loop ligand gated ion channel. Okay, right, so uh, the structure for this video is we're going to start off um, with looking at the structure of cis loop uh, receptors. Uh, we're then going to uh, look at uh, the opening mechanism of the cis loop ligand gated ion channels. And by the way, cis loop receptors, cis loop ligand gated ion channels, they mean the same thing. Okay, right, so we'll start off with the structure of a cis loop uh, ligand gated ion channel. So, let's draw one here. So they are channels that sit within the phospholipid bilayer of cells. So here is one of these cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. And down the middle, you'll have the pore here. And then it's sitting in the phospholipid bilayer of the cell. So these two lines represent the outer and inner leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. Now, uh, this whole thing is the um, cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel. And by the way, uh, ligand-gated ion channel is often abbreviated to LGIC for short. Now, if we look at the structure of a cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel, what you find is that it's not just one protein. The whole thing is not just one protein. Instead, it's made up of loads of different proteins stuck together. So it's actually made up of five separate proteins. Let me show these. One, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentamer of five separate subunits. So the cis loop ligand gated ion channel is pentameric. It's a pentamer. Right. So now uh, let's take out one of these um, one of these subunits here and have a look at its structure. Okay, so we'll remove one of these uh, subunits and have a look at its structure. Okay, so if this is the phospholipid bilayer again, then the membrane spanning structure of the polypeptide that makes up a fifth of this cis loop ligand gated ion channel will be as follows. So here's the amino terminus. Okay. Here's the cis loop here, which is a kink in the polypeptide that's held together by disulfide bonds between cysteine residues on opposing strands. And then you have four uh, membrane-spanning alpha helices, like so. And then you have this large intracellular loop, as it's called, between the third and fourth membrane-spanning alpha helice. Okay, so this is the uh, membrane-spanning topology of a single subunit of the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel. Okay, so let me just give you some insight into why they are known as cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels, and then I'll give you some examples of cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. So, it's this cis-loop here that causes them to be called cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. Okay, so let me tell you more about what a cis loop actually is. So, if you have a polypeptide here, okay, so this is just a blown up version of this cis loop. We're taking this bit of the polypeptide here, and what you'll have is a cysteine amino acid within this polypeptide. So, here is a cysteine residue the amino group, the alpha carbon, the R group of the cysteine. Okay, which would have a file group. However, uh, the file group is going to be linked with the file group of another cysteine on the opposing strand. Uh, so I won't show that. Um, I won't show the hydrogen on the sulfur uh, because it's going to not have a hydrogen bonded to it. It's going to have another sulfur bonded to it. But it would have a hydrogen if it was just a uh, normal cysteine residue. Then what's going to happen is the polypeptide continues on, and I won't draw every single amino acid. Instead, I'll just uh, represent them all as this line. And then what comes along is another cysteine amino acid. So here's the amino group of your next uh, cysteine amino acid, your alpha carbon, your R group here, okay, with the sulfur off the end. And again, this would have a file group. However, uh, it's going to be... Uh, in a disulfide link with this other sulfur atom here, like so. So they've both lost their hydrogens that would have been attached to them. Then, just to complete the structure, here's the carboxylic acid group, and then it will be linked in the peptide link to the next amino acid along in this polypeptide. 
So this link here between these two cysteine amino acids uh, on opposing um, on opposing strands here, okay, this is known as a disulfide bond, or also known as a disulfide bridge. So disulfide bond slash bridge, and this is what is holding together this loop in the polypeptide. Now. The amino acids which are involved in the formation of this uh, disulfide bond are cysteine amino acids. And the three-letter amino acid code for cysteine is CYS. Just for a bit of added information, the single-letter amino acid code for cysteine is just C. Okay, so this is why we call this a cis loop, because uh, CYS is the three-letter amino acid, well, the three-letter code for the uh, amino acid cysteine, which is so important in uh, maintaining the structure of this loop. Okay, right, so that's why they are called cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. Now, basically, the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels are a massive great family. There are absolutely loads of different types of receptors which have this structure, i.e. they are pentamers, and when you look at their protein subunits, uh, their mem the membrane-spanning topology of these protein subunits looks like so. So, what are the most famous examples of these? Well, basically, to start with the most famous one, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So, all over the body we have nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. If you look at the structure of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, they are pentamers of five separate protein subunits. And if you look at the structure of the uh, protein subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, they all have structures that follow this same um, membrane-spanning topology. And of course, you know, when you look at the different types of cis loop ligand gated ion channels, the subunits aren't going to be identical. I mean, the primary amino acid sequence will be different, otherwise they wouldn't have different ligands. Uh, but they all have this same common membrane-spanning topology, these same features, so they're all grouped together as being very similar. Okay, so the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is an example of a cis loop ligand gated ion channel. Another example is the GABA-A receptors. So GABA uh, stands for gamma amino butyric acid. So I'll just write that somewhere. Uh, I'll write it down here. Gamma amino butyric acid. And basically, GABA is the uh, main inhibitory neurotransmitter within uh, the central, well, not within, within the brain. It's the mo main um, inhibitory neurotransmitter within the brain. And it has two main types of receptor, GABA-A receptors and GABA-B receptors. GABA-A receptors are a type of cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel. GABA-B receptors are G-protein coupled receptors. So you have this massive great family of receptors for GABA known as the GABA-A receptors. And I want to stress that you know, there's not just one type of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, and there's not just one type of GABA-A receptor. There's many different types within these. So these are uh, these are families within the family of cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. Okay, uh, so these are sensitive to gamma amino butyric acid. Um, then another example is the 5-HT3 receptors. Okay, so again, uh, serotonin is a very important neurotransmitter, but most of the um, uh, receptors to uh, serotonin are generally G-protein coupled receptors. So for instance, the 5-HT1 and 5-HT2 families of serotonin receptors are uh, G-protein coupled receptors. Uh, the only ligand-gated ion channels that you have for uh, serotonin are cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels, and those are the 5-HT3 family of receptors for uh, serotonin. And again, there's multiple members within this family. Okay, and then the final um, form that I think I should mention is the glycine receptors. 
So just as GABA is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter within the brain, glycine is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter within the spinal cord. And again, you have uh, cis loop ligand gated ion channels which are sensitive to the glycine within the spinal cord. So again, if you look at a glycine receptor structure, it will have this pentameric structure. And if you take one of the protein subunits out of a glycine receptor, it will have this same sort of membrane spanning topology but I really want to stress that you are not using the exact same subunits. What's common to the subunits of these four different types of receptors is their membrane spanning topology. They all have the basic same structure, but they don't have the same structure. We're not using the same identical protein subunits to make these four types of receptors, obviously, otherwise they'd be all the same type of receptor. Right, uh, so I think I'll just give a few uh, more basic facts about this um, uh, subunit structure here. So we can see that there are these four membrane-spanning alpha helices, as they are. So these are four membrane-spanning alpha helices, and they are labeled. So this first membrane-spanning alpha helix here, this is labeled the M1 membrane-spanning alpha helix. The second one here, okay, this is labeled the M2 membrane-spanning alpha helix. The third one here, this is labeled the M3 membrane-spanning alpha helix. And finally, the fourth one here, this is labeled the M4 membrane-spanning alpha helix. And that's made that picture rather crowded. This loop, this large loop between the M3 and M4 membrane-spanning alpha helix, this is known as the M3 M4 loop, but it's also called the intracellular loop. So you might also hear that called the intracellular loop, and indeed in the upcoming videos I will refer to it as the intracellular loop. Okay, so that's a, uh, a bit more basic information about the uh, structure of these basic protein subunits. Uh, in the next video what we'll see is uh, how these protein subunits are actually positioned uh, within the receptor and how it gives rise to the different structures of the receptor.